Coming up on Studios America, Blaze TV's Dave Rubin joins us to rip apart the government's new mask mandates. Solid proof emerges that yes, the media actually is working for the Biden administration. And what sort of awfulness has Andrew Cuomo been up to lately? If I had to guess, it involves a whole bunch of lying. So let's do Cuomo versus the truth. Did you know this particular program you are engaged with at this very moment is the manufacturer of the most popular Andrew Cuomo merchandise on the internet? It's true. Andrew Cuomo is awful.com. We'll get you the t-shirt. You'll get there the, uh, the mug. And I guess now you might need to get the mask as well. Mask has been up there for a while. Not sure people have been buying it lately, but if you're in New York, you may need to buy it again. We'll get into that later on with Dave Rubin. But there's one thing that you need to know about Andrew Cuomo, and this is a universal truth. We try to give you the, the, the facts in the most precise, clear, and concise way possible. Andrew Cuomo lies. This is what he does all of the time. All the things he says, every time he says them, are lies. He can't physically say a thing that is not a lie. That's Andrew Cuomo. I have told you the facts on COVID from day one. Whether they were easy, whether they were hard, I told you the truth. No, you didn't. While a lot of people were talking politics, oh, that you and were. a lot of people were talking theory, you would never. and a lot of people were trying to deny right. because they didn't want to deliver bad news, no, I like told you. you the truth. Did you? Did you? You know Andy? why? Because I believe in you. You are such a pandering. Can't think of what to say next without swearing, so I'll just move on. Andrew Cuomo in that clip, literally saying that he told the truth about an issue he was in the middle of lying about. In this entire speech, he went to talk about how he had been exonerated by the Department of Justice. Of course, the truth is. He wasn't cleared from wrongdoing by the Department of Justice. The investigation that they kind of, the Biden administration basically weaseled out of, included only 5% of nursing homes in New York. He's still on the hook for the other 95%. Plus, he's still under investigation by the FBI for covering up the death toll, by the Brooklyn U.S. Attorney's Office for covering up the death toll and for his profiting $5.1 million from covering up the death toll. A stupid book. Did I mention he lied about and then covered up the death toll? You might not remember that because Democratic State Attorney General Letitia James uh, outed him for underestimating the death toll by about 50%. And did I mention that he's still, to this day, currently underestimating the death toll? According to the New York Post, quote, as of Monday, the State Department of Health only acknowledged 43,059 deaths, while the CDC listed 54,946. He's also lied, of course, to the people of New York over and over and over again. One of the little things you heard him say in that clip, oh, I told you the truth from the beginning when everyone else was trying to deny at the beginning, I was there with the truth. Not true. He lied to the people of New York in March of 2020 when he told them that the reality of COVID was reassuring that the facts did not merit the level of anxiety that we are seeing. And of course, that we have more people in this country dying from the flu. Do you remember how Donald Trump got beat up for that exact same thing? Andrew Cuomo was also saying it over and over and over again. And of course, he waited four or five days after Donald Trump said, hey, um, things are getting a little bit out of control here. We may need to change things. Let's go into a few days to stop the spread. Cuomo didn't listen to that. He, in the area where probably you did need to shut it down, 
He kept it open for four more days. He, when Donald Trump shut down the country, or at least recommended that, and Andrew Cuomo ignored him and kept it open, um, he cut the gathering uh, number, the large gathering number and maximum, to 50 people. After Donald Trump was on TV saying, uh, hey, this looks pretty bad, especially in New York City, he was like, you know what? Let's only have 50 people gather. That was five times Donald Trump's number, yet he bitches about Donald Trump and the way he handled it. Andrew Cuomo told the children of the people in the nursing home not to worry. He said, quote, these are our grandparents and we're going to do everything we can to protect every one of them. And I give the people of the state of New York my word that we are doing it. Spoiler alert, he was not doing it. He was not doing any of it. Instead, he was actually hastening their demise. And let's not forget about vaccines. You know, now he's Mr. Science. Now he's, oh, you got to get the, the arm, uh, get the jabs in the arms. We got to drive people in cars to get the shots. We must, uh, how can you be so anti-science? Rewind a little bit. Think back a little bit. The vaccine comes out. This is not before the vaccine has come out. This is, the trials go through. The results are released. Donald Trump is doing everything he can to get it to market, make sure it can be distributed. What did Andrew Cuomo say? Quote, frankly, I'm not going to trust the federal government's opinion. And I wouldn't recommend to New Yorkers based on the federal government's opinion. Unfortunately, we no longer can trust the federal government. End quote. That was Andrew Cuomo when Donald Trump was president and the very same vaccine existed that he has and is pitching to you today. His continuous lies about killing seniors and molesting underlings tend to overshadow the fact that he also lies about regular things that occur in his obscenely corrupt everyday job as governor. For example, in 2015, he proposed a train choo-choo train to LaGuardia, one of New York's big airports. Basically, you can now, in today's world, take a really long, uncomfortable subway ride all the way out to City Field, where the Mets play and where they play the U.S. Open for tennis next door. That leaves you about two miles away from LaGuardia. So, Andrew Cuomo has proposed building a separate train. That means a long train ride and then a transfer to another train ride, which gets you to your plane ride. The cost for this two miles of train? Hmm. $450 million. A transportation expert analyzed the plan and said, quote, it's hard to imagine how the state can justify spending half a billion dollars on a transit project that will increase travel times for most people. Yeah, increase travel time. What idiotic person would want to spend a half a billion dollars to increase travel time. Is this really true, though? Am I just saying it's going to do that? No, here's the breakdown. We have graphs for you. Conserva nerds, unite. The Cuomo plan would increase travel time from every area of the city. Red bar, more time on the uh, Cuomo uh, fancy choo-choo train. Every area of the city, your travel time to the airport would go up with the exception of one, which is flushing, that's where the train station will actually be built. $450 million to shave seven minutes off a 22-minute 22, 22 ride for people who already live near the airport. Everywhere else in the entire city, it makes it worse. But of course, it wouldn't actually cost $450 million. That would be way too easy. What have I said? It costs $600 million. <laughs> now, how excited would you be? Don't, don't say anything yet. Don't act yet. Because what if I said it didn't cost $600 million in total, but instead had increased by $600 million? What if I said that that increase of $600 million is just the increase that has happened in the last three years? What if I told you? that in the time before that, it had already increased by more than another billion dollars. Total cost estimate as of today, $2.1 billion, more than four times the original estimate. And here's the thing, they haven't even started working on it yet. This was proposed in 2015. Obviously, we all know it's going to go up from here now that they're gonna actually start building it. 
It also goes without saying that the entire process has been completely corrupt and has Cuomo's direct fingerprints all over it. Not to mention, there's already a bus that does exactly what Cuomo's train would do in less time. The Q70 Select Bus Service provides an 11-minute nonstop round trip every 7 to 10 minutes during most of the day from LaGuardia. And it connects to more stops than the one stop the Cuomo Choo Choo train would reach. This detail comes from a 2018 story entitled Cuomo's LaGuardia, LaGuardia Air Train Looks Like a $1.5 Billion Boondoggle, which was true then and continues to be true now, despite the fact that it was written before the project had ballooned another $600 million. This week, Cuomo finally received FAA approval to build his money-burning choo-choo train. What the New York Times called, quote, a notable victory for Andrew Cuomo, seriously, guys? Are you even trying? In Cuomo's press release, he called LaGuardia, quote, the first new airport in the United States in over 25 years. But LaGuardia Airport opened in the 1930s. And not to mention, even if LaGuardia was new, the airport in Williston, North Dakota, opened in 2019, which would be, if my math is right, more recent than the 1930s. Andrew Cuomo lies. This is what he does all of the time. All of the things he says, every time he says them, are lies. He can't physically say a thing that is not a lie. That is Andrew Cuomo. Did I mention Andrew Cuomo was awful? Dot com. Let me give you another site to go to while you're on the interwebs today. Built.com. Built Bar is now the official sponsor of the Olympic USA track and field team. So as you're watching at the Olympics, you know Built is helping them go there. And it's pretty, a pretty exciting thing. They've got nine delicious flavors, uh, plus the occasional limited time flavor. We're talking about coconut, coconut almond, cherry, raspberry, mint brownie, peanut butter brownie, double chocolate, salted caramel. This is something my wife discovered a long time ago. She's told more people about Built Bars than I ever am going to be able to because she's an evangelist for them. Why? Because they're better than any protein bar out there. And as Glenn says all the time, we shouldn't even be calling them protein bars. Sure, they have 17 grams of protein. Sure, they have 130 calories. Sure, they only have four grams of sugar. Sure, they only have four grams of net carbs. You can't beat that. But we should just be calling this a candy bar because that's what it tastes like. You want to have a candy bar today? Go to built.com. Use the promo code STU15. You'll save 15% off your first order. Don't forget that promo code STU15 because that's how they know you like this stupid show. The promo code is STU15 for 15% off at built.com. Always a pleasure to have Dave Rubin on the show. He's the host of Blaze TV's Rubin Report, author of Don't Burn This Book, Thinking for Yourself in the Age of Unreason. Dave, uh, the new book is, is going to be revealed here on Friday. I want to give you the opportunity. You can do it right now. Don't think about it. Just reveal it. Go ahead. <laughs> clever, mm. clever. Worth a shot. But I talked to that Beck guy, <laughs> and he wants it. He wants it on Friday. But I believe you'll be in studio with him, so that's pretty good. Mm, yeah, pretty good, pretty good. I'm excited about this. And it's right before we're getting right in under the wire here on this show and on the radio program, as you are about to go uh, off the grid for August yet again. Can, for people who don't know, uh, you know that, what this is and why you do it, can you explain it? Yeah, this will be year five of my annual August off the grid. I started it five years ago, really just as a lark the first year, it was just kind of like, could I do it? Could I put my phone, my iPad, my computer all in a safe, not even know the combo and just disappear for a month, not pay any attention to the news, not listen to the current events, not worry about what the Democrats said or the Republicans did or any of that stuff. And what would happen to me in the course of that month? And basically what happened was I was less anxious. I was happier. I laid on a beach. I slept better. I ate good food. I exercised. It was really, you know, crazy stuff. But joking aside, it was really just sort of like living pretty much like we did 20 years ago. I mean, at least in terms of the phone, maybe not in terms of the full detox on news and current events. Uh, but I did it that first year. So many people were really amazed by it. And I loved 
that I did it. It was actually when I originally grew out the beard here. And, uh, and then I thought, you know what, I'm gonna make this an annual adventure. And I think, honestly, one of the things that have sort of kept me sane as a, a political pundit or whatever it is that guys like us are these days, I think one of the things that has kind of kept me sane in all of that is that I do this. I do this every year, even though it's getting harder to do each year because I'm, I'm busier in my shows and you know I'm running locals.com and I've got a lot of stuff going, but, but by saying, hey, I will bust my butt for 11 months of the year and then I'm gonna do this sabbatical and I'm gonna relax, give my brain a little bit of space, let, you know, rethink the world a little bit, uh, you know, connect maybe with, with some of the spiritual side and all of that stuff. It's, it's been very good for me. And then of course I come back and you know, all hell has broken loose throughout the month and I get caught up. Uh, Glenn has brought me back on, uh, our friend Ben Shapiro has brought me back on, Michael Knowles. This year on September 1st, it will be Adam Carolla will be the one with all of the, the info drop on me on September 1st. Oh, that's gonna be an absolute must listen. <laughs> Adam Carolla yeah. uh, informing you about everything you missed for a month. I will say, I think about you often when, when I, I ha you know, I'm listening to, I was just listening to, I think it was Malcolm Gladwell, an interview with Malcolm Gladwell. And he was just talking about kind of the poison of the internet. And it just so deeply connects with me. And every time I hear the argument made that I should not be doing this, I should not be on social media all the time, it so connects with me and I never, ever do it. And I just, and I really do admire the fact that you are able to do this. And it, I feel like it really must give you perspective. Do you stop, do you, do you, do you think, do you write? What, 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 what other things do you do other than just enjoying life away? Yeah, I mean, truly the main part is the enjoyment part. Like we're gonna, I'm gonna park my butt on a, on a chaise lounge on a beach in an undisclosed location and that's where I'll be. And I can just kind of sit there and stare at the ocean for an extended period of time. I know a lot of people, well, most people actually have their phone these days and their Instagram and their feet into the water the whole time. <laughs> uh, but I don't even need to do a ton of reading. I can actually just let the brain relax. I really can. That being said, I will be catching up on some reading, but I'm gonna do nonfiction stuff. You know, usually for the last couple of years, I've traveled so much doing gigs like you do, and I would do most of my reading on the plane, but then obviously because of lockdowns and everything else the last year and a half, it's been a little bit less travel. Finally, it's just started to pick up in the last two months or so. Um, but I'll, I'll do a little bit of reading. Um, you know, it really, it's just restorative. Like there isn't rocket science to it, but Stu, I would say this, you know, I know not everyone can do the, the month off, and I know that's like an extreme version of this, but one thing you can do, I know you can do it, Stu, I have faith in you. You could take a Saturday off, you could take a Sunday off, you could maybe do a Saturday and a Sunday, you could maybe do a week around Christmas or something like that. Uh, you know, I try not to tweet on the weekends, that sort of thing, because you know, all of us, but especially guys like us that do this for a living, we're caught in this never ending rat race. There's always gonna be something going on. There's always something viral. There's always some sort of outrage. But I didn't get into this business and talk and to tell people what I think um, to keep everybody outraged. I, I, I actually, the, the best compliment that I get these days is people will come up to me and say, Dave, you know, you're helping keep me sane throughout all of this. And I think part of sanity is not being in the matrix 24 seven, you know, fighting the, the agents. Yeah, I think that's true. And I think a lot of this, you know, to make it enjoyable for us to do this, you have to be able to keep things in perspective. And that's the thing the internet is really, really bad at. Um, that being said, there are things that drive people crazy. Um, you mentioned going to, going to the beach, Dave uh, Rubin, hanging out at the beach, relaxing. Are you going to be able to do that in Southern California right now? I mean, it seems like you guys are going back into lockdown yet again. The masks are coming back out. This cycle of, of control seems to be kicking in once again. Yeah, well, I don't want to say exactly where we'll be on the travel portion of this. Suffice to say, I will be somewhere that I'm fairly certain the authorities won't be hunting me down <laughs> on the beach. Um, you know, joking aside, they actually were doing that in LA. I mean, there were videos from the beginnings of lockdowns where there were cops chasing surfers down yeah. the beach. And it's like, man, if you really thought this thing was real, would you be chasing the diseased surfer <laughs> down the beach or would you be running the other way? I mean, that that's one thing. Uh, but more broadly on California and Los Angeles, yeah, look, we've got this really absolutely horrific governor, Gavin Newsom, who's been all about lockdowns and you know everyone knows all about him going to French Laundry, one of the most expensive restaurants and eating with lobbyists without masks at the height of the pandemic. We know about the homelessness here, the drug use, we know about the high taxes, the regulation, all of those things. 
Thankfully, though, he is being recalled in large part because of those things. People have just sort of had it. It's not it's not right wing maniacs, as Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren keep saying, that are pushing this recall. It's actually mostly liberals that were mugged by reality. It was restaurant owners and business owners who suddenly couldn't go to work, couldn't put food on the on the table, who suddenly were like, well, this guy, look at him while he's you know spending 20 grand on, on booze, literally 20 grand on wine at French Laundry with his friends. Jeez. So uh, look, my hope is that my friend and one of the great conservative thinkers that we have, he, well, he described himself as a, as a small L libertarian, but in essence, I would say part of this new uh, wide tent conservatism that you and I have talked about before, Larry Elder, he's running, he's doing extremely well in the polls right now. And my hope is, you know, there's about 40 other candidates running right now. And obviously, you know, some of the brush will get removed over the next couple of weeks. Caitlyn Jenner's running. I've been saying it from the beginning. I think that thing's a sham. And by the way, she's in Australia right now shooting Big Brother. So it obviously is a sham. <laughs> so if you can just get more people to coalesce around Larry, and if people can honestly say, wow, there really is a chance for this guy, get him in one debate. Just get him oh. face to face with Gavin Newsom once and anything can happen. I know I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. Yeah, you know, I, 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 Larry Elder is legit. I mean, this is a real thinker. This is a guy that knows all the arguments. He knows the facts. He's lived a, a life. He's not some, like, a protected uh, evil white person. Uh, he's just a guy <laughs> who can connect, I think, with moderates. I think with some uh, disaffected Democrats. I think there's a, there, I, I hate, maybe I've been off the internet too long here, but I have some optimism for Larry Elder as a candidate. You think it's possible? I do think it's possible. Uh, look, California is screwy, and the good weather, the sunshine, the beaches, it fries people's brains, <laughs> and they cannot realize that the people that they keep voting in, Democrats in almost all cases, are the same people that make the state worse. They, they, they vote in Democrats, then they wonder why their taxes are going up, and they can't seem to make a connection. They vote in Democrats, and then they have problems with schooling, and they can't make the connection. Something happened because of the lockdowns. As I said, it was liberals mugged by reality. It was apolitical people who suddenly were like, oh, well, maybe I haven't really cared about politics my whole life, but politics suddenly really cares about me and I can't make my living anymore. And it's become completely intrusive. And, and I think that is why Larry has a chance. And by the way, let's not forget, uh, there was a recall election of Gray Davis, you know, what, 15, 18 years ago, and we got Arnold Schwarzenegger, who at the time was really sort of a moderate conservative. So, you know, there is some precedent there. And then there was that Ronald Reagan guy who, you know, was a Hollywood actor who became governor of California. And then if I'm not mistaken, he was president of the United States. Yeah, I've heard of him. He was pretty. He was a pretty good president, was, if I remember. He was always right. on a horse. He had a nice hat. His <laughs> wife seemed to like him. Yeah, that guy. I remember that guy. Um, Dave, let me switch gears a little bit to uh, to the way our government and a lot of these big tech companies have suddenly now just admitted they're working together. We saw Jen Psaki come out talk about how not only should uh, the the government you know come out and be able to tell these big tech companies who should be taken off of these platforms, but if if they're going to come off of one platform, you know, they should just be able to come off of all the platforms at once. Why don't they all, I don't know, collude and get rid of all of these voices at the same time? This is usually what they say when they're inside voices. I don't think they're supposed to say that out loud. Saki is just the worst. Man, <laughs> that woman, she can't say anything true. If you said to her, what's your favorite color? I'm pretty sure she would say four. She just is <laughs> incapable of saying anything true. However, she did sort of let the truth drop there because the two statements that you just addressed, they happened within about 48 hours of each other. So first was where they said the administration flags posts for Facebook. That is as close, those are her words, okay? Mm. The word for is the key part, meaning we the administration, we the government of the United States basically tell this purported private company what to do. I mean, that, that absolutely is an intrusion uh, and a move on the First Amendment, that's number one. And then this secondary comment of if you get banned from one thing, you should be banned from all? What, what are you talking about, lady? I mean, again, we're, we're to believe that these are private companies. I'm not even sure if that's true in reality anymore because they obviously have deep connections to the government and backdoor access and a, and a whole bunch of other things. And she's basically telling you that they work together. But to say those things within 48 hours of each other uh, is a dramatic, escalation of the war on free speech. And I, you know, look, you know, I was a lefty. And when I talk to the remaining liberals who will still talk to me these days, now that I'm <laughs> friends with scary people like you, I'm like, guys, do you regret it yet? Do you regret the Biden thing yet? 
And they still, what liberals seem to fear more than anything else, they'll watch the world go to hell in a handbasket. What they fear more than anything else is being called a conservative. So as their speech is being taken away, they just don't want to be called a conservative. It's it's truly a, a fascinating psychological notion. Yeah, it's really interesting to go through this as a conservative because, you know, I have real sympathies for the idea that these are private companies and should be able to do whatever of they course. want with their own freaking websites. I mean, you run locals.com. You know, the, no one should be telling you what, what material you can have on your site. If you have someone on there who starts saying, I don't know, some terrible racist, uh, you know, thing, you should be able to kick them off. It's your freaking website. But you're not working with the government and announcing it to everyone. And <laughs> these, are, these right. companies are just fusing to be part of the government. And then the First Amendment is involved. No, of course, and Stu, what you know, most of us that care about the Constitution, what we're worried about is excessive power over our lives. The founders 250 years ago could have never imagined that there would be this superstructure that exists over the government. So when they were saying, okay, the government can't come for your free speech, you should be allowed to say whatever you want, of course, with those tiny caveats, slander and libel and a direct threat, Uh, to someone's life, that sort of thing. Um, They never imagined that there would be these companies that would in essence be more powerful than the governments that could reorganize information the way Google can, that can in effect do a digital assassination of the president of the United States in front of all of us, right? Within 24 hours, everybody took Trump out. So who was more powerful? Was it the head of the United States government, the last superpower in the world? Was Trump the most powerful player at that moment? Or was it, you know, five or six big tech oligarchs that can make those decisions. So that's why all of this is so complex because of course I'm with you and because of now running locals, I don't wanna police anyone's language. Our general policy is look, if you break the laws of the United States, you got a bigger problem than us. But beyond that, if you wanna say mean things or conspiratorial things, it's like, yeah, Fauci could be on there. He, he's a conspiracy theorist and he spreads misinformation, misinformation <laughs> every day. We'd allow Anthony Fauci to be on Locals.com. Wow, and that's a, there you go. Anthony, if you happen to be watching right now, uh, you've, got, you've got a home. <laughs> I know he's a big fan of yours. <laughs> I'm sure he is, I'm sure he is. Uh, one more thing before we go. You, you brought up, uh, you mentioned kind of uh, adjacent to January 6th. Uh, the commission's going on now. And I find that like we're in this weird place where the left and the media have done such a terrible job acting as if this was the worst thing of all time, comparing it to the Civil War. It was, you know, it, we were seconds away from losing our democracy. That like a lot of conservatives who were rightfully upset and, and horrified by why, what actually happened on that day now don't even want to talk about it. They don't even want to talk yes. about the fact that cops got beat over the head and like there was real ugly crap that went on that day. But the media has done such a terrible job beating us over the head with these false ideas of civil war that it's hard for anyone to get any answers with this commission. Is that how you see it? Yes, absolutely. And I love that framing because of course, and I said it on my show this morning, Anyone that broke the law that day should be dealt with fairly within the law. Now, there have been issues where we're keeping people in jail now for months without trial and solitary confinement and a whole bunch of other stuff. But look, if you if you attacked a police officer, if you broke a window, things like that, look, we're, we're conservatives, you know, care about the law. So mm-hmm. it's okay that, that the law should act as the law should act. That being said, because the left does with the, this with everything, they take something that happened and they blow it out to such an extreme while at the same time ignoring all of the violence on their side. Say the last two years worth of BLM Antifa violence that has caused, last I heard, over $2 billion worth of damage that has made New York City almost unlivable, that has destroyed Seattle, destroyed Portland. They ignore all that. And we also played on my show today uh, a clip from May of 2020. And you may remember May of 2020 when Antifa and BLM attacked the White House. And there were hundreds of people out there attacking police officers and FBI agents and everything else. Now, why is there no commission on that? So so this is just so consistent with the fact that the mainstream media, in collusion with big tech, basically act as the 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 blocker if this was football they're they're the blocker so that the democrats can just run right through and that's what we're all fighting against and the real question i think is how long can they let the rest of us be online because in the old days they could lie and it would be very hard to expose a lie but now their lies get exposed in real time thanks to video and twitter and everything else so it's like are they going to allow that to happen much longer and that's why by the way that 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 marriage 
between this administration and big tech is so dangerous. Because at what point are they just like, you know what, we've just had it with that Stu guy and he's getting booted. He, he, he doesn't like Joe Biden. He can't stay online. Dave Rubin, fighting for your right to be online, even though he's about to take a month offline. It's, it's very impressive. <laughs> it's uh, Blaise very, very bizarre. Yeah, it is very it was a, well, a little bizarre, but that's okay. Blaze TV's uh, The Rubin Report, of course, is available all the time. And he's the author of Don't Burn This Book, Thinking for Yourself in the Age of Unreason. Plus, he's got a new book out. What was the name of that again, Dave? I forgot. Stu, you will you will literally be the first to find out on Friday. <laughs> That's true. Okay. You will be there. You will be there. <laughs> Dave, thanks for coming on the program. Good to see you. Dave. So let's just say there's a vaccine that is approved and even distributed before the election. Right. Would you get it? Of course you will. Well, I think that's going to be an issue for all of us. Oh. If and when the vaccine comes. Right. Okay. It's not likely to go through all the tests that needs to be and the trials that are needed to be done. What? When we finally do, God willing, get a vaccine. Oh, okay. Who's going to take the shot? Wait, what? Who's going to take the shot? I thought you were going to. You're going to be the first one to say, put me, sign me up. Would that be bad? They now say it's okay. Oh. And the question of whether it's real when it's there. Real? That requires enormous transparency. Mm. You got to make all of it available to other experts across the nation. Okay. So they can look and see. Mm -hmm. So there's consensus. This is a safe vaccine. There's not. If the president announced tomorrow we have a vaccine, would you take it? Well, Only said... if it was completely transparent that other experts in the country could look at it. Right. Only if we That's knew all of what case. went into it. If Donald Trump can't give answers and the administration can't give answers to these three questions, Jesus. the American people should not have confidence. But if Donald Trump tells us I should that we should take it, I'm not taking it. Wow. So the anti-vax parade, if you remember all this back when Donald Trump was president and it was politically valuable to question the vaccine, the left was on the other side of this issue. They said it was going to be really, I don't know. What if it, they, they're going to need to show it to the experts? Who do you think? You think Donald Trump made it? I think he made it in his kitchen? I think he was microwaving things from his refrigerator and seeing if he could come up with something that would cure COVID. It was made by experts. They all saw it. They released the results. You all, of course they knew they were going to release the results of the study so that other experts could see it. Of course they knew that was going to, to happen, but they found it to be a political advantage to get people at that time to question the vaccine. And you think, well, how could they say things like that and now be on the complete opposite other side? How could they do that? Well, they always have someone running interference for them. This time it's PolitiFact. PolitiFact does this all the time. I have, I have this monologue I've wanted to do for a while about a fact check uh, back about the George Floyd riots. We may have to do that this week. Remind me to do that this week. Um, but PolitiFact does this thing where they go, they go through every hoop they can possibly do. They'll jump through any hoop to try to give a more favorable rating to someone on the left. And they will, they will not even attempt to understand what is said by someone who is on the right. They do this all the time. Great example here. PolitiFact has, has declared the montage you just heard to be false. Actually, they weren't criticizing the vaccine. They weren't being skeptical of the vaccine at all. Their justification is quaint. PolitiFact issued a fact check um, with, the, uh, with the headline, Biden and Harris distrusted Trump with COVID-19 vaccines, not the vaccines themselves. Quote, the parts that are left out of that montage you just heard made clear that Biden and Harris were raising questions not about the vaccines themselves, but about then President Donald Trump's rollout of the vaccines and the risk that that effort would be rushed or politicized. Well, yeah, it was totally done for political purposes, of course. Yes, 100%. They didn't mean word one of it. They 100% knew that Donald Trump had nothing to do with the development of the actual substance going in the needles. They knew experts were doing it. They used um, a tactic to try to make people skeptical of this vaccine because they thought it would get them an additional vote or two. That's why they did it. It had nothing to do with wanting to end a pandemic or make people healthy or anything else. That's why they did it. So, yes, they did all of that stuff. There's no false rating about that vac uh, the vaccine montage you heard. That's exactly what they did. Yes, it's true. They did it to bash Trump. That doesn't make it better. It makes it worse. They didn't even believe it. Unbelievable. But, of course, this is why, if you're in the Biden administration, 
that you, can, you feel comfortable saying lies all the time because you know PolitiFact or somebody else will be there on the other side to back you up. Like, for example, the migrant children in the U.S. tent camp have faced depression and filthy conditions, according to whistleblowers uh, and their complaints submitted to Congress. Remember how important whistleblower, uh, whistleblowers were in the last uh, Congress, the last presidency? When they started massive investigations, they, all you had to say was, there's a whistleblower, you can't criticize them. Well, whistleblowers are coming out criticizing Biden's handling of the border. And are you hearing a lot about it? I mean, there's a couple stories out there about it. I'm glad they're at least reporting it a little bit. But is it a major story? No. The, the crisis on the border is still raging out of control right now. And it continues to go that way. They don't care. They know that once we get down the road a little bit, PolitiFact will write their little uh, mostly true of one of their statements and it'll all be over. Biden, here's another one. Republicans who say Democrats want to defund the police are lying. Do you believe Joe Biden or your lying eyes? I mean, we saw these people over and over and over again say they wanted to defund the police. We have montages of it. We played them for you before. Does it matter? No. Now, I mean, Joe Biden has a little bit of an, of an out himself as he didn't typically advocate for this position. But it was all Democrats saying this over and over and over and over again. Uh, the, the person that the head of the DNC called the future of the party was blabbing about defunding the police routinely. And yes, eventually Biden did come out with a very weak statement saying he didn't want to actually take all funding away from all police officers. Wow, that's incredible. But he's played footsies with these people since the beginning. And it's a giant chunk of the left and his party. It's certainly Democrats, even if he says he doesn't believe it. Democrats as a whole absolutely do. And finally, Hunter Biden. We know that the media will have the president's back. When we go through this laptop, uh, Peter Schweizer is doing it right now. And when they find uh, whatever they do find, likely some real corruption with money going through Hunter Biden to Joe Biden, the president of the United States. Are people going to stop and look at it or are they just going to hide it like they did last time during the election? They wanted to make sure they didn't make that mistake again. They didn't want to give any uh, oxygen to a potential scandal because that they think they cost Hillary Clinton the election because they kept talking about her emails. Now, this is an insane view of what occurred here, but that's what the media believes. And they thought the same thing could happen with Hunter Biden. So they banned the New York Post, the nation's oldest newspaper off of social media. So they couldn't they couldn't promote their own story about Hunter Biden. Hunter Biden, by the way, just in case you were concerned about him, he's got a big art show coming up. Five hundred thousand dollars of painting. I know you're probably going to get one or two. Don't get all of them. Leave some for the other people. Biden uh, has a new residence in Malibu. It's a $3.34 million home, and it was listed for rent at $20,000 a month, which is pretty fascinating for a guy who essentially has, you know, taken all of his money and put it up his nose over the past few years. While he's not impregnating strippers, uh, he's been basically doing blow and, and God only knows what else. But yet he's got enough for 20, 20K a month. Well, I mean, look, the art business is really good, and he's just a really prolific, talented painter. Back in a second. The show is on YouTube every single night, and you can always post your comments uh, uh, live during the show. We love to read them. Uh, we talked about private schools a little bit and government schools. Uh, Lori writes in, yes, parents should remove their kids out of public schools, but why are we still paying taxes to public schools? We should stop paying taxes for random garbage we didn't vote for. God, I wish, I want this to be true. You know, when I first took my first, uh, my first full-time job, I made a very terrible salary. But today, I pay more in property taxes than that entire salary for kids to other kids in town to go to school. Not me, not my kids, my kids go to a different school. But I get to pay for them to go to school, even though I don't use it, those schools at all. It's a great system and I can't wait for it to continue. I, I, love, I love that. Um, reviews as well, five stars is the appropriate number of stars. And it's very important that you remember that. YouTube, uh, you can't really review there, but you can on um, all the other places, podcasts, wherever you are, click the five stars, drop a quick review. It's great, whatever, that's fine. Uh, this one comes in, dumb show. I love this stupid show because 
it hurts others way better than helping used to. And that's true. That's one of the great benefits of reviewing this program because not only does it help this podcast, but it hurts others, and that's the most important thing. So thank you so much for your ratings and reviews. Uh, Nancy Pelosi, uh, she of NancyPelosiSucksPen.com, has called um, McCarthy a moron for his mask mandate criticism. <laughs> McCarthy came out and said, look, you know, this is ridiculous. You're putting another mandate on it. You know, the CDC was just re recommending the opposite. We're all vaccinated here. Really, seriously, you're going to make us wear masks. Uh, apparently, uh, he's a moron. I will say this pen, more prescient than ever because she sucks and she's been sucking worse, worse than ever lately. Um, okay, uh, there is, of course, a little bit of suckage coming from the GOP as well. They have announced they have an agreement on a major uh, infrastructure deal. This makes no sense for so many reasons. Number one, we don't have the money for an infrastructure deal. We don't have an extra trillion, trillion and a half laying around to spend on all this crap they say that they need. That's number one. But number two, and probably more importantly politically, is the Democrats are going to spend three or four trillion dollars anyway. They have said publicly, if they can't get this deal to go through and the Republicans to take some part of the blame for the infrastructure part of this, they're just going to put it all in the next bill anyway and pass it without them. Why are you helping them? Why are you helping them spend an extra one, one and a half trillion dollars? Uh, the wonders never will cease uh, with these guys. It's, it really is incredible. Uh, Martin Luther King Jr., Remember him? This is this guy. He, he made a lot of big speeches, said we should judge people by the content of their character, not the color of their skin. Had crazy ideas. I said before that eventually they're going to be pulling down his statues because he is totally uh, out of alignment with the modern left. Martin Luther King makes no sense to the left right now. Judging people on merit? No, we, we want to judge. We want to give things to races that we are we've decided we're going to give them to and punish other races. We, we are now absolutely judging people by the color of their skin. Uh, his son, Martin Luther King, the third, who's very, very left. Uh, he said, yeah, we should judge people by the content of their character, not the color of their skin. But that is when we have a true, just, humane society where there are no biases where there is no racism, where there is no discrimination. Unfortunately, all of those things still exist. Right, this was the goal, right? We're shooting for, we don't have a perfect society, we're shooting for that. You don't need to do those things and remind people of those things when you already have a perfect society with no racism. Uh, they, I swear, they are going to pull the statues of Martin Luther King to the ground, and it seems like his son might just cheer it on. Mila Kunis and Ashton Kutcher are married. I think. I don't know. They're a couple. And they were on a podcast recently. Uh, Ashton says that he did not have uh, hot water growing up, so he didn't shower very much. And Mila Kunis responded that she, has, uh, she was not a parent that bathed her newborns ever. Now that their children are older, Kutcher said that they have a system for washing, and that was to do it only if they can see dirt on the kids. If you can see dirt on them, otherwise there's no point. Kutcher says that he personally uses soap and water on his armpits and crotch daily, but nothing else ever. I do have a tendency to throw water on my face after a workout to get all the salts out. Look, I don't think anyone was under the impression that Ashton Kutcher showered. I think that's been known for a while, but Mila Kunis, really? That's just like, ru that ruins all sorts of visuals for me. Also, it just does not... Uh, I... I I think long term, it's going to do some real damage to me knowing that information. And now, hopefully, you're damaged as well. BlazeTV.com slash Glenn is the place to go. Uh, actually, BlazeTV.com slash Stu on this show. Uh, because, you know, that's how they know you like this stupid show. Te uh, Stu is the uh, code. You get 10 bucks off. Glenn Beck is coming up next, though. Check it out.